All right, so here are 10 things to know before soldering copper pipe. And remember to hit the like button if you learned something by watching this video. Now, the two first things I talk about are concerning safety. So if safety is not your kind of thing, just skip to the third topic. Number one is having an extinguisher nearby. If you click this video, it's most likely because you're totally new to soldering and you don't know how to take the proper precautions. 95% of repairs or modifications require the water to be shut off and emptied from the lines, which means that if something was to catch on fire, you'd be left empty-handed. What I suggest doing before starting your project is to fill up a bucket of water, to have your extinguisher close by, and to use these flame-resistant blankets to avoid burning the surrounding area. You could even use aluminum paper if that's all you have. Number two is another safety precaution, and that's to use safety goggles. I bet you guys know what this is. Yep, this is flux. Flux is an acid. It contains zinc and ammonium chloride, and trust me, I caught a lot of stuff in my eyes in my career, and flux is the number one winner in terms of pain. Obviously, this is more of a concern when you're soldering overhead, as when the flux is heated, it turns liquid, so if you're directly under it, you're bound to feel the pain. So just wear some goggles when you're soldering, please. All right, onto the real stuff. Number three is making sure that the pipe and fittings you're soldering are 100% clean. This is kind of like trying to stick a sticker on a dirty surface. It just won't stick. It's the same analogy when soldering, and they both need to be spotless. The best way to clean the pipe is with an abrasive pad. I don't use emery cloth or sandpaper like most people do, as they tend to slip in the hand because of their paper back. The pads have grip on both sides, which gives you more purchase. And for the fittings, I just use these wire brushes right here. What I do like to do with these, however, is to cut them and use them in a drill. It's much quicker and a lot less tiring. This is what a clean pipe and fitting is supposed to look like. No pits, no dirt, no spots, just good old shiny copper. Number four is getting good quality flux brushes. Let me explain why. These brushes are often made really, really cheap and it's hard to get the quality stuff. But because they're made so poorly, the bristles tend to come out as you're using it. This is what it looks like. So what do you think happens next? As you assemble the joint, the bristle serves as a vein or passage for the water to escape. So here are two little tricks to prevent this from happening. The first is to use some ABS, PVC, or even super glue at the base of the bristles. This will secure them in place and prevent them from coming out. And the second trick is to not use them to clean the joint off. This burns them and makes them really brittle for the next application. Number five is touching the joint with your fingers. Once again, if you try sticking a sticker on an oily surface, it just won't stick. Our fingers constantly secrete oils, and just to show you what I mean, on the left is a pipe with flux on it, and on the right is a pipe with an oily fingerprint and flux on it. As we could see, the one on the left sticks like it's supposed to, but the one on the right has trouble adhering. And this is because of the oil from my finger. So never ever touch the parts that are going to be soldered with your bare hands, or it might just compromise the joint. Number six is making sure there's no residual water in the pipe. I made a whole video on this not too long ago and how it's basically impossible to do. The reason being is that the water absorbs the heat while you're soldering and doesn't allow the joint to get hot enough. This happens mostly when soldering in a basement as the water from upstairs dribbles down into the pipes until they're completely empty. I'll put a link here and one in the description box below to this video if you want to know how to solve this problem. The seventh thing is which part to heat when soldering. The answer is pretty simple. You heat where you want the solder to go. If we look at a half inch elbow for example, we want the solder to completely fill the joint. And for that, the heat needs to go to the back of the cup. So you'd point the hottest part of the flame here to make sure it's hot enough, and the same for the other side. 
One thing you don't want to do if you don't want to get punished by the plumbing gods is heat the actual solder. Heating the solder won't do anything, even if you try really hard. All that it'll do is break off and go to waste. I suggest watching my soldering playlist to learn how to properly solder. Number 8 is which part of the flame to use. Your torch has a sweet spot. You don't want to get too close nor too far. The hottest part of the flame is right here at the tip of the inner cone. By using this part of the flame, you'll get the job done quicker, you'll save on gas as you won't be heating it for as long, and you'll reduce the amounts of oxides introduced to the joint. Here's another side-by-side -side clip that shows using the hottest point of the flame and the coldest, more rich part of the flame. They're both heated at the same time and temperature, and we could see that the right side oxidized a lot more, which could prevent good capillary action. Number 9 is wiping off the excess flux when you're done. Like I said before, flux contains acid. If you leave it on the pipe after you're done, it'll eventually eat away at the copper and make a hole in it when you're out doing the groceries. So you must get rid of it. Just wait for the joint to be cool to the touch and use a rag to wipe it off. There's no need to use special products like Simple Green or any of that, as most fluxes nowadays are water soluble. And number 10 is to always inspect your joints once they've cooled down. I like taking a few minutes to visually inspect my work as it's a lot easier and a lot less messy to do before testing it with water. I always have one of these small inspection mirrors with me to check the back of the joint. And if I see that there's a spot that has no solder, the best thing to do is to dismantle it and restart. Just heating it back up and adding solder will only fix the problem temporarily. And I also made a full video on this if you're interested in watching it. Link in description box below. And that pretty much covers it. Like, share and subscribe if you learned something in this video and drop a comment below if you have a question. And until the next one, Thanks for watching.